Hello and welcome to the podcast filled with his love. It's been quite a while since I've been able to record an episode on the podcast because I've been in Europe with my wife the past two weeks on what is called a three temple tour. We went to the London temple, the Paris temple, and the Rome temple. We were the quote, tour educators, unquote, on the trip. And so we shared with all of those who came on the trip the history of the church in England and France and Italy, and the history of the temples in each of those great lands. Today, I want to share an experience I had actually in France a number of years ago when my family and I were visiting there. We were on the Eiffel Tower, and I had the privilege of witnessing quite close up a conversation between an American woman, and the gardener who was taking care of the grass that surrounded the tower. The woman approached the man. He was spraying water and watering the grass and trying to get all the dry spots. And this woman approached him, and I could hear the conversation. She said, could I have a drink of water from your hose? And the French man Knowing what she was asking, but not able to speak English, he responded back and said, Madame, cette eau est non potable. Non potable. She did not understand, so he repeated himself in French again, cette eau est non potable, which means this water, my friend, is not drinkable water. If you drink it, it will make you sick. So the woman returned to her husband, who was standing nearby, and said to him, I always knew French people were so rude. He would not even give me a drink of water. Now, hold that conversation a little bit in abeyance while I recount another conversation, a very different kind of conversation that I had with a woman when we were flying from Paris to Marseille. It was an early morning flight, so people were not wanting to sleep, so There we were, my wife on my right-hand side, myself in the middle seat, and a small gray-haired woman sitting in the window seat on my left. I started a conversation with her. I thought she probably was French, and I was right. So I asked her if she lived in Paris, and she informed me that she was from the Caribbean island Martinique, she was very French, however, and uh, but wanted to carry on this conversation. So I kept talking to her a little bit and telling her about our Three Temple tour that we were on at the time and that we were uh, going to visit the Rome Temple and we had already visited the Paris and London temples. And she was quite interested and seemed to want to talk, so I kept talking with her. When she heard about the temples and knew that I was religious, she said, I don't want you to think less of me, but I'm not a believer. I don't really believe in any religion. I don't really believe in God. And I said, well, I will not think less of you. I said, we actually have an article of faith in our belief system in our church that says, we allow all people to worship how, where, or what they may. She liked that. She says, some people look down on me because I'm not a believer, I'm not religious, but so I hope you won't look down on me. I said, not at all. I said, so, but let's talk about this a little bit more. As we continued the conversation, I learned that this good woman was going to Marseille to visit a friend because Back home in Martinique, her husband was suffering with a severe combination of diseases, both dementia and physical ailments that had come on because of a stroke. And she was getting to a point where she was having difficulty caring for him. And so this was in some ways a respite visit for her. Uh, she had been caring for him for several years and she needed someone else to care for him for a little time and for her to take a break. So we talked about that. I kept learning a little bit more about her. And at one point, because 
we, I was on this three temple tour trip. It was a religious kind of pilgrimage of sorts. And so I mentioned that when I was 19, I served a mission for our church in French Polynesia in Tahiti. She looked surprised when I said that, and she said, I actually lived in Tahiti myself for a period of time. And I said, oh, what years were you there in Tahiti? And she said, I was there from 1966 to 1968. Now I was the one that looked surprised. When she said that, I, I actually wondered if that could be true, because I said, well, those were actually the years that I lived there, 1966 to 1968. I said, is that a coincidence that we were both there in Tahiti? This, this island, of course, Tahiti, is very far away from Martinique. And now here we were flying from Paris to Marseille, which is literally the other side of the world from Tahiti. And both of us had been in Tahiti at exactly the same time, the same two years. I looked at her and I said, frankly, I see this as a miracle. I think, and she smiled and kind of laughed. She says, well, I don't know if it's a miracle. I said, yeah. I said, the two of us here sitting together, never having seen each other, and here we are looking back over 50 years and saying that we were both in the same place, the same small island, a remote place in the world, during the same two years. Unbelievably amazing. And I said, because I believe in miracles, that's one reason I believe God directs our lives. And she said, you know, for me to believe in God, I think I would have to have some kind of visitation. Without hesitation, I looked back at her and I said, well, I said, I am that visitation. I, she said, I need to see an angel or something. I said, I am the angel. I'm the angel that came to visit. And then she started to laugh again. And she said, I may, might need something more than that. And I said, well, you might be able to get something more than that if you keep learning more about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We had a very memorable, uplifting, fun, informative conversation. And I had never met this woman before. But to think of us both being in Tahiti during those same two years kept hitting me as, well, you know, Elder Bednar says, in the work of the Lord, there is no such thing as a coincidence. I do not believe that I was seated in that plane next to her by coincidence. I'm hoping that our conversation prompts her to look a little bit more to see if she can find a belief in God. Now, what are the lessons from these two instances? First, the Eiffel Tower instance. Well, I think one lesson is misunderstandings like the one at the Eiffel Tower can cause us to jump to very wrong conclusions. The woman concluded that the French man who was watering the grass was rude and unhelpful when in fact he was trying to help her. If she had taken a drink of water, she would have been sick for the rest of her trip in France. So he was actually trying to help her and she thought he was being rude. So this happens oftentimes. We, we often read between lines, we overinterpret. Someone says something to us and we think that they meant this or that because of the tone of their voice. Maybe they were tired, maybe they were frustrated by something else, but the words that come out of their mouth sound difficult to us, and so we overinterpret. We might make even a positive, helpful comment into a negative one like this woman did at the Eiffel Tower. So that's one lesson from that encounter. Now, the lessons that I learned from my visit with the Martinique woman on the airplane, one lesson is don't hesitate to start a conversation. Don't hesitate. It's so easy. All I had to do was ask her if she lived in Paris, and the whole thing was off and running. If the, par if the person next to you doesn't want to talk, or if the person you encounter doesn't want to talk, that's fine. You can read that and, and honor their desires. But if they do want to talk, 
something good might come from it, as it did with that conversation I had with that woman. Short-term encounters, here's another lesson. We oftentimes have these short-term encounters. This was about an hour and a half conversation we had on this flight. But these short-term encounters can be more fulfilling than one might imagine. That was a very fulfilling conversation to me. I was able to tell her all about my mission. I told her what we did on missions. I told her about the Three Temple Tour and what we did in temples. I kept helping her understand who I was and what I valued, and she helped me understand who she was and who she valued and what she valued. So these short-term encounters can be more memorable than we think. A little hour and a half encounter and it can change us in some way for the better. I could tell that she felt judged by other people because of her agnostic stance. And that when she found that I did not judge her for that disbelief that she had, I think she warmed up to the conversation and wanted to share with me more about her life and the challenges that she had had with her aging and diseased husband. So we can all help one another in conversations, whether we are together for an hour and a half or for a year and a half or for ever and ever in a family relationship. We can help one another, even in small, simple ways, in short, seemingly unimportant conversations that later turn out to lift both of us. So I hope, my hope is really that you will find someone that you don't really know very well, that you'll have a conversation with them, that you'll strike up something that will perhaps lead to further conversations and more close association. And if someone else needs this, I hope you'll share it with them. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time.